Hello friends, welcome again in the next session. Actually in the previous session we are going to discuss about the types of data and data collection methods. So we have seen student there are two types of data, primary data and secondary data. Primary data is that data which is collected afresh first time by the researcher and secondary data actually it is published and it is actually available everywhere in the Google or the other websites. So these are the two types of data usually used for the research work. Now let us see how these types of data has a different methods. So there are several methods of collecting primary data. First we are going to see what are the different methods which could be used for uh, collecting the primary data as such. So there are five methods by which we can able to collect the primary data. So the first is observation method, interview method, through questionnaires, through schedules and some other method which includes different warranty cards, audits, then visits and other methods as such. So that we are going to discuss in the next flow. So while pr proceeding further, first we are going to see about the observation method. What is observation method? The name itself indicate that the observation method is the method which is most commonly used method, especially in studies relating related to the behavioral sciences. So mainly researcher look up into the problem in a way that he has to inculcate some of the observations. So these observations when researcher has decided before that he has to observe something which is related to his problem, then it would be a structured observation. But it context with his problem when he observes something and analyze that which is unknowingly done by them, then it is unstructured observation. So structured observation and unstructured observation are the two types of observation methods. Observation methods are specifically studied in related to the uh, behavioral sci sciences and mainly the researcher done the observation in order to collect the primary data. Second method student comes that is interview method. The interview method of collecting data involves presentation of oral verbal stimuli and it reply in terms of oral verbal responses. As you all know interview means what? Interview means someone asks question to uh, some other person and that person may be a respondent. He will give a response with the answer. So that's why this method is unique and being identified by a oral verbal stimuli. This method can be used through personal interview or telephonic interview. In any case, physically if the person is present, we can take a personal interview. If that person is not available, we can use some media as like a telephone, which uh, we can say that it is a telephonic conversation or telephonic interviews. So this interview method is also been used for collection of primary data. Third method come up that is through questionnaires. The name questionnaire if itself indicate that it's a, it consists of a set of question or number of questions which are printed or are typed in a definite manner in the form of a set of forms. So pertaining to the research problem, researchers set the questions and that questions has been asked in order to inculcate the information related to it. So the questionnaires has to be set by the researcher himself or herself in order to gather the relevant data. So questionnaire is mailed to the respondent who are expected to read and uh, understand that question and they other, otherwise you can collect that data by write down the reply in the space mean and for the purpose of questionnaire itself. So these are the way that we can collect the data by means of a questionnaire. The respondents have to answer the question on their own. So that will be we can say that reliability of data so that the researcher can be reliable on them and will get a particular data which is relevant to his or her research work. The next method comes student that is through the scheduled. Now scheduled and questionnaire they are one and the same. Only the thing is that whenever the observations or interviews are being taken in a particular time of period or particular schedule has been uh, made, then it is called as through schedules. So this method of data collection is very much like the collection of data through questionnaires with little difference is that lies in the, the schedule. It is a pro forma containing a set of question. Okay. So this set of question have a pertaining to a 
particular pro forma that is called as scheduled inter scheduled interview or scheduled methods of uh, data collection so they are being filled by the numerator who are specially appointed for that purpose only and then they can get the relevant data for the research work then the other methods out of this four there are other methods too which includes warranty cards distributor or store audits pantry audits consumer panels use of mechanical devices through projective techniques depth interview and content analysis so stu student this type of data which is uh, adopted the other methods they may have the different methods like warranty cards as uh, when we visit to the malls or different uh, public places we got that the store audits and distributors they might be gone through the certain surveys and will get that information even in the consumer panels even in the mechanical devices even uh, the depth interview will be the another uh, makes a good method for uh, data collection and the content analysis will give us the actual data which is uh, required for the research work and this all method student because it has been collected by the researcher and it is collected very first time or it is a fresh data that's why these methods all these methods are called as a primary data collection method and this data is strictly collected by the by the researcher very first time and a fresh so proceeding further student let us see that what is secondary data as i have already told you in the previous video that secondary data means that data which is already available and it refers to the data which are already been collected and analyzed by someone else so secondary data may either be published data or unpublished data but it is already available though it is unpublished also but it is already available you can search in the google you will get that data so such a kind of data is called as a secondary data and usually published data are available in the various websites and journals and we can refer it in context with our research problem so researcher must be very careful while using the secondary data because to avoid the plagiarism also to make the your research work very very authentic and legal you have to be very careful for using the secondary data because uh, the researcher must make a minute of scrutiny that how possible the secondary data may be unsuitable or inadequate in context to that problem so researcher must have to scrutinize first which secondary data has to be used in the research process so uh, by the way of caution the researcher before using the secondary data he must see that the data must possess reliability of data suitability of data and adequacy of data the data should be reliable then and then only you should use it for the research work the data also should be suitable suitable mean to say that it should be relevant to your research question then and then only you can use that and that is called as suitability of data another term comes that is adequacy adequacy means that should not take that data which is not at all adequate for your research work and that is the reason why these three things has to be taken care of that reliability suitability and adequacy that makes a difference in collection of secondary data and that's why the researcher has to be take care of that that the data should be reliable data should be suitable and data should be adequate the another method comes student that is case study method case study method is one of the very popular form of qualitative analysis and it involves a careful and a complete observation of social unit so in that social unit you may take any person or any family or any institution any cultural group or even any event also so it is a method of study in depth rather than a breadth so in depth investigation of any case for example i could say that the attack attack which has been made in the hiroshima and nagasaki that is called as a nuclear attack right so this attack what are the uh, causes what are the problems associated with whenever you are going to take any case study you should study it in a depth and then you come to know what are the pros cons and what are the preventive measures could be there so this is the way that the case study could be taken for the research work so case study method basically has the different aspect so student individual case study studies organization institution studies of events set of individual case study community studies social group studies all 
could be come in a case study case study doesn't have a certain bindings that only this population we can take for the case study it's not like that we can able to explore the case study for the individual for the institution for the event for the set of individual means group of people for the community or for the social group anything so in that domain student we can able to uh, use the case study so the case study method or case study places more emphasis on full analysis of a limited number of events so as i already told you that you can take a, any one individual a group of uh, people or any community or social group or any event as such so whenever you are going to select that particular case to study that's why it is it is called as case study method so the case study deals with the process that takes place and their interrelationship how this case has happened when it happened why happened where happened and what are the its post uh, informations or post effects on the society that could be uh, studied by means of the case study method so what is the advantage of studying the case studies the advantage of studying the case study that we can prevent certain accidents in future so that is the main uh, aim to study the case studies so thus case study is essentially an intensive investigation of the particular unit under the consideration so what are the evolution and scope of the case study the case study method is widely used systematic field research technique and this method concerning problem pertaining to the areas of interest so even management or what we can say that experts they can use the case study methods for getting clues to several management problems so in brief case study method is being used in several disciplines not only this it is also increasing day by day it's not like that the science student could use the case study no the commerce social science even humanities all the students could use the case study method so the evolution and scope of case study method is very vast and it is increasing day by day now question come that how to proceed with the case study so to study that i have made the some phases so the major phases that are involved in the case study are as follows as like a recognition and determination of the status of phenomena or the case study which is to be investigated so first of all the researcher must know that must recognize that must determine that what is the status of that case so to understand that phenomena which is to be investigated first very important phase is recognition and determination of status of the phenomena or the case then uh, pertaining to that case second step proceeded that is collection of data examination history of the given phenomena how it happens why it happens where it happens like that so history of the phenomena so diagnosis and identification will be the next step which is been used of a casual factors as a basis for remedial and development treatment so if th that case has been happened what are the diagnosis or what are the treatments which could be given so that could be uh, involved in the diagnosis and identification of casual factors then next term comes application of remedial measure for example treatment and therapy so after in depth studying that case study we come to know that what will be the application and remedial major so how we can able to uh, how we can able to uh, avoid such a kind of cases in the future that is what the remedial majors and the same way student follow up program to determine the effectiveness of that treatment applied will give success in your case study method so these are the very much important phase in the uh, phases in the case study method that has to be followed by the researcher so here we have completed about the different methods which could be adopted by the researcher while doing the research work thank you